Well, welcome to the 4D4F webinar here based at Urta in the lovely town in Manels, uh, very near Girona in Spain. My name is Richard Lloyd. Uh, I am Precision Livestock Manager for Innovation for Agriculture in the United Kingdom. And I'm also the administrator and coordinator of the European project uh, 4D4F, which is data driven dairy decisions for farmers. You have two ways of uh, watching us. Uh, some of you are logged in through Webex. Some of you are looking at the 4 d for our Facebook page. Both are really good options. We do, however, have some video presentations and we think there may be a, a benefit on the 4 d for f Facebook page. But in any case, you will see in the transitions between the speakers, then there are going to be uh, some periods where you'll just see people standing up doing nothing if you're watching on Webex. So please bear with us if you do see that. And uh, our thanks to uh, Vaca Printer uh, who have enabled the Facebook uh, transmission of, uh, of this webinar. We would like this to be uh, an interactive session. Uh, there are different ways of posting your questions to us. Uh, we have Leonard Wickstrom in the room here and he will be monitoring all of your questions, whether you've typed them in uh, Webex or whether you've posted them on Facebook or you've posted them on Twitter with a hashtag 4D4F. So what is 4D4F? Well, the objectives of 4D4F, we are a thematic network and we're focused on developing a network for dairy farmers, dairy sensor technology suppliers, data companies, agricultural advisors and researchers, and farmers obviously to explore ways to use data generated by dairy sensors and to support improved decision making by dairy farmers. Very complex words perhaps, but essentially, essentially we revolve around a community of practice. I'm hoping this, yeah, here we are, uh, the slide has come up. Uh, so the community of practice, what is that? Well, the community of practice is you. Uh, it consists of two sections really, the first is a real life people where we have groups of farmers around the different uh, um, countries where 4D4F is placed, placed, but also we have a, um, a digital uh, community which is around 4D4F. And if I go back to the, the, the slide, putting it into sort of uh, easier words, there's two parts of 4D4F. One is getting people together to develop and further the use and uh, uh, we can get out of sensors and data and make better decisions on farm. And the second is to bring all this information together onto the website. So if you as a, as a farmer, you were looking to make an investment, you've got all the things in what, it, on one site, whether it's in the warehouse of technology or the best practice sites that you can make better decisions on where to invest your money in technology. The website is here. And uh, I think for those of you, uh, you'll, you'll see this slide again, uh, but it is www.4d4f.eu. We're very much uh, a bottom-up uh, programme, and it's this community of practice that identified 12 areas where we are specialising in, in 4D4F. Uh, we have icons for them, but starting in the left-hand corner of the slide, uh, we have... Uh, Udder health or mastitis, then we have lameness, then we have nutrition, then we have reproduction, we have data management, we have milking data, we have uh, activity and behaviour, we have metabolic diseases, we have calves and young stock, we have goats, we have grassland management and we have housing. And if you go on the website you can go specifically into any of those areas. Uh, we have 15 partners within 4D for F. Uh, they're on the screen there. I haven't got time to go through everyone, but if you go on, there are detailed descriptions of all of our farmers from nine different countries uh, within the, uh, Europe. So you can, you can uh, follow, follow those there. So why are we here? What are we doing? And essentially, we are looking at solving the challenges that farmers have. Uh, when we ha do these workshops around the UK, certainly these are the areas that we find farmers are most concerned about profitability, animal welfare, reducing antibiotic use, environmental pressures and labour on the farm. And it's our firm or my firm belief that the use of dairy technology 
can have major impact in all of these concerns for farmers. Now, dairy technology, it's really uh, came about as uh, herds got larger and larger with less staff, there's less time that we can give to each animal. And also these animals are getting, are giving higher and higher yields. And the, obviously technology has to have a payback and the payback on this technology has traditionally been around heat detection. But in the last three or four years, there has been a revolution, not only within uh, technology itself, in fact, it's known as the fourth agricultural revolution, a long way from those who do know Turnip Townsend back in whatever century crop rotation came, came into being. Uh, but it's really focused away, not or keeping the focus on heat detection, but moving also towards health information systems, because these monitors can monitor the animals 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And what we're really concerned with is not just the uh, data, because data does not have any value at all. It's information that has value. But that information only has value if you can then go on and turn that into actions. And that is really the focus of the webinar that you, you will see today. So these actions, and we call them uh, a standard operating procedure, uh, and part of the work of 4D for F again, which you can access on the website, uh, we have published uh, standard operating procedures and we will be uh, publishing uh, the integration of these standard operating procedures into herd management systems. Work carried out by Van Hall Langstein University in Holland, but essentially an SOP is a protocol for how farmers can use specific types of sensors and integrate the data they produce into their decision-making processes. Uh, basically, uh, turning uh, gut-based decisions into actions that can be detailed via the information and your management, your management system itself. So, what is our program? Um, well, after this, we have, uh, we're going to look at the warehouse of technology that is on, available on the website. Where, why this is important, as we will find out, is that it, it actually details all of the technology that you can buy, which is related to sensors and data in dairy cows. Then we have uh, uh, a look at the standard operating procedures that have been put into place in the Herd Navig Navigator system in Sweden by Anika Hansen. Fi uh, so after that, we will look at a uh, video of uh, Klaus Jelema in uh, Sweden, actually a Dutch farmer who actually farms in Sweden, who makes great use of a multiple, uh, multiple sensors in the way and how he uses those to manage his farm. Uh, after that, we will look at a revolutionary way of treating lameness and we'll demonstrate how you can actually treat lameness long before you can see the lameness in the cows themselves. Uh, and obviously what you're all waiting for at 14.45 approximately is the uh, presentation the, of the prestigious award, the 4D4F Innovation Prize. Uh, and then there will be uh, time to answer your questions uh, after that uh, as we look at the future of what we're going to do with uh, the, the 4D4F Community of Practice and answer all the questions that you have as you go uh, on. So what I'd like to do now is hand over to Christine Pickard and she will take you through how you use the warehouse of technology on the website.
Hi everyone, uh, my name is Christine Picard and uh, I'm a researcher. I work at the Flanders Research Institute for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. And uh, it is one of my main in interests is helping farmers pick the right technology for their farm. So in light of that, I would like to uh, present to you the 40FREF technology warehouse. It's a very brief presentation just to show you where you can find it. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks. A um, couple of years ago, uh, American uh, researchers, they did a survey. Uh, they asked farmers um, why they sometimes choose not to invest in technology. Uh, why is the adoption of uh, automated monitoring technologies um, has been so slow? And one of the answers that we got, or that they got, was that uh, a lot of the farmers are actually not that familiar with the technologies out there. More than half of the farmers don't know uh, whatever is out there on the market. Uh, other reasons were also that they're uh, not sure about the full transfer amounts and that they're a bit turned off by the information uh, over in principio. Um, but uh, ah, I see that somebody is uh, joining us. Hi. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, there are a lot of technologies out there and we want to help farmers pick the right one for their farm. So uh, in the 4D Threat project, um, we made a technology warehouse. Um, we uh, collated and summarized uh, a lot of uh, information on dairy sensors um, surrounding 11 different topics from heat detection to precision feeding, mastitis, whatever. Uh, and we compare all the different systems out there on the market um, based on more or less objective criteria. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, functionality, what do they measure? Uh, who distributes them? What's their battery life? Um, something we didn't include in the technology warehouse is the price of the technology because it changes a lot. It depends on the region, it depends on the dealer. So the price is not included at the moment. And where can you find the technology warehouse? You can find it uh, on the website and you can also download it as an Excel file. And I will now try to show you where it is on the, on the website, if it works. Um, so if you go to our website, www.4dfref.eu, um, it, will it work? Yeah. All right, the connection is a bit slow, but there you go. Uh, you can see the technology warehouse if you click in the menu bar up top. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see a cow with different icons on her. And those icons, different icons, represent different uh, uh, sensors. So if we go to the automatic heat detection systems, you can click. And there you can see an overview of the different systems uh, that we know if you scroll down a bit. And uh, so you can see the different brands, the different uh, battery lives, so where you can place them on a cow, on a leg, or on the, on the uh, neck, uh, whatever. And if you want, you can also download it as an Excel file. I think it's very useful for farmers if they want to um, decide on a new technology to invest in, or it can also be useful for advisors to advise their, their clients. Uh, so thank you. I think we can go back to the to the slide. Um, so our goal is to um, keep the technology warehouse uh, updated. We need to update it uh, frequently, but for that we also need your input. Um, if you know of a, of a dairy sensor technology that is not yet on the list, you can always let us know. You can send us an email or you can just write it in the comment box below because we really need uh, input from everybody out there from different countries to tell us what is uh, uh, going on. So um, with that, I would like to wrap up my presentation and give the words to Annika. So thank you.
Hello, my name is Annika Hansson. I'm working as a DARE consultant in Sweden, in Sverige, and I'm specialized in training uh, farmers to use the herd navigator. And I'm here to present SOP, Standard Operation Procedure Tool in Herd Navigator, and what does uh, this Standard oper Operation Procedure contribute in DARE in Sweden. Uh, uh, I will start with presenting what Herd Navigator does, and then I will start to present the idea of standard operation procedure uh, and how to implement standard operation procedure SOPs in dairies. Um, I will also talk a bit about experience with fertility improvement in a dairy farm and a result in a dairy herd as well. And the, to start with, this is progesterone curve from Herd Navigator. Uh, Herd Navigator looks over fertility, reproduction and health issues and I will focus on reproduction and, and fertility today. And the thing you can get aware of while using this progesterone curve is uh, disruption or disorder regarding uh, fertility and cycling. And this cow, she started off, off with an anastrous phase in the beginning of her cycles and then she got uh, enormous um, cycle and she got the heat and the first heat is marked out with a red triangle and that includes that the farmer get aware of that this cow is now in heat in a special report at her at her or his dashboard uh, however he choose choose not to inseminate this time but the next heat he decided to inseminate the cow and it's marked out with a blue dot in the, in the screen as well and the farmer will also get aware of likely pregnant with an orange triangle in this view. Uh, this is the information the farmer got from this cow at his dashboard. Well, then we can in introduce and implement a tool for the farmer, a standard operation procedure. And I would suggest you always, always should start with a plan for a result at the farm, a business goal. And out from that, you make a first draft, uh, how to solve this, to manage to reach this business goal, and then mixing between internal and external review, discussion how to solve this in best possible way. And after that, you test the idea, and after you test it, post, uh, you evaluate and look, did we get the result we wanted, and then keep on training and using the tool and as well as improving the tool. And here I have an example from a Swedish dairy farm, sorry. Uh, this shows the distribution of uh, fresh cows in the herd and it is, they are within one and 120 days in lactation and it is the proportion of cows in early lactation. And to start from the beginning, the yellow line is the previous year the year before this, this actual farm, he had 100 cows and he planned to invest in a VMS farm. And uh, he also adopted his system to the Swedish pay system from, for milk. And it was profitable to have more milk in autumn and winter. So to that, he decided to let most of his calf, cow calf in the autumn. And uh, this year, 70 of 125 calves was conducted between August and December. 56% of the cows get, gave birth in five months in the autumn. Uh, he also started and doubled his herd size the next following autumn, and that's the blue line in, in this view. Uh, and when he doubled his size, he also bought a lot of heifers, and uh, due to that, even more crowded in the uh, calf pen in this year. Uh, 139 carvings of 237 was conducted in the autumn, 59 or 60 percent of the carvings during five months in the autumn. And as he has invested in a BMS farm, uh, they decided that this was not profitable. Also, the pay system in Sweden had changed with a more even pay for milk. Uh, so they decided to try to smooth this out, spread carvings more even over the year. It would also be profitable or beneficial in the, in the calving area because it was very crowded in the barn for calves. 
uh, in la of labor perspective, it will be more easy and smooth work, even be spread over the year, and economical as well, due to liquidity will benefit from more even deliver of milk yield to the dairy. We try to use this tool, and it's just an example of the tool. Uh, the idea is to start after the intensive uh, calving period, to start to inseminate the weaker low producing cows earlier in the beginning of the intensive period of insemination. So we decided to cows well below average to get inseminated 40 days after calving. And moving over the intensive period, at the end of the period, let the high producing stronger cows be inseminated later, like 70 to 80 days after calving, and prepare them to be to be uh, to have a longer calving interval instead. And in this uh, schedule here, you can easily change the the data or the settings. Uh, DIM is days in milk. In the in the box for the first calving here, you can see it's 45 to 70 days in this example. You can easily change it to be, be earlier or later, or you, you can and you can complete with the setting uh, which milk yield will set the cow to let her be inseminated or not. The outcome to the decision to inseminate inseminate or not will be shown shown in the report of the cows which are in heat. So the staff who should do the insemination will get the information to wait to the next period or to inseminate in this heat or not. And here it what is what came out of the first year in use or the following year. Now this yellow line here is the previous year, which was the blue one the year before. And this year, uh, 122 calves out of 274 were conducted during five months. That's 44% of the calves. It was much more evenly spread compared to the years before. And the the tool was used the following year as well to try to make it even more even, and I can tell you it did work. I'll try to do the next picture. Well, here is a result from a big Swedish dairy farm uh, introducing herd navigator, and here's an example of key performance indicators uh, regarding fertility traits and this was i have to tell you a real excellent farm regarding fertility it's excellent result uh, i calculate number of calvings per cow in this herd with 258 cows 250 214 cows gave 258 calvings uh, and that's on average over three years before her navigator introduction on average, over three years, they use 1.7 insemination per born calf, and uh, submission rate among first lactation cow is 74%. And I have to tell you, this is just uh, calculated for cows with more than one insemination. I know it's a kind of differ how to calculate this number in, in Europe. And in the cow, 69% of the cows were inseminated, uh, heat were inseminated. And conception rate also above average in Sweden, 50 to 52 percent among their cows, and pregnancy rate 37, 36 to 7 percent. Uh, 7 percent of the cows were culled due to the uh, culled cows were culled due to fertility. Uh, first year after herd navigating, they reached even more calves per cow, 1.23 cows, and you can see that submission rate has increased and conception rate are uh, almost the same level or a bit decreased. That's a common experience among herd navigator herds. And I think that's an effect of inseminating uh, more silent heat. Uh, you have less pregnancy rate where, when they, the heat are not that strong. And pregnancy rate uh, has the same level or increased a bit. I mentioned to you that this farm we looked into was far beyond average in Swedish farm. And I tried to make an economic output in a 200 cow herd here, compared with uh, introducing 
compared with the Swedish average and introducing herd navigating this herd. The average number of calves born in a herd with 200 cows would be somewhere between 200 and 220 cows. Uh, average losses uh, among uh, reproduction animals, including stillbirths, birth will be something between 10 and 15 percent. Some of the heifers will not become pregnant, and theoretically, you will get on average 40 to 45 percent recruitment. The average, rec average recruitment is within 38 percent. If you got the same result with an herd navigator introduction as the previous example, you will get 246 calves. Uh, if you set the Swedish recruitment average here, uh, you have a need for 60, 76 heifers in the herd. Uh, you will have an excess of 110 heifers with average mortality. That means uh, a surplus between 30-35 heifers. And in that case, you will have, well, you can sell heif pregnant heifers, or you can perhaps breed with beef semen and sell crossbred calves for a high price compared to purebred dairy cows uh, for meat production. And uh, comments from farmers with herd navigator in Sweden is a, is a questionnaire among farmers. Well, they found it awareness raising about cow fertility. It's, it's uh, also becomes a more interesting job to work when you have all this information. One farmer said, it's like being able to look inside the cow when you have all these uh, progesterone uh, values in the screen and you get all the information what's going on in her. Uh, it's more fun at work and it's easier to be involved. Uh, you have also a better result in my production and technology is fun. But it's also more vulnerable to be relying on, tri on technology. And with that, I like to, to pass over. I like to pass over to the Swedish farmer from the Netherlands, uh, Klaas Jelma, and a video. We have. Welcome to Ugerup Sateri in the part, southern part of Sweden. It's a wonderful November afternoon and we will visit Klaus Arne Jellema, who is a Dutch farmer working here in Sweden with a very interesting milk production. He is using modern technology in order to, uh, to supervise his production. And we will talk a little about the technology, the benefits and recommendations for other farmers. So welcome to Ugerup in Sweden. Uh, okay, Klaus, um, what, you, you have a very interesting system. What are the main components of it today? Well, uh, two and a half years ago, uh, NADA introduced this new responser. Mm -hmm. What is used, of course, the first priority is identification in the mail robot. And the pretty standard for that time was already uh, the heat detection mm -hmm. activity. And they added as well in the same responser rumination time and eating minutes. Mm -hmm. And the last option, which was very interesting for us, because we have complete three cow traffic and no separation rooms, was the position system. Mm -hmm. For that system, uh, it's added in the responser, and we are uh, the only thing what you need to do extra is to put up those bacons every 50 meters in the stable. Mm. It actually works exactly the same like satellites mm. part up. So you know exactly where each cow is. Yes, yeah, they are, uh, the location is on two, three meters exact. Mm. 
So what we get here is we get use the apps from Lewis. Mm -hmm. They are combined with the system which is introduced from Nana into the Lely system. So when we need to select some cows to bring to the robot, we have the app where we can uh, see which cows need to be brought to the robot. One click further and we see the map. We have all the information except which cows we need and where they are. So that is a, a big time saver for us. Because here are 360 cows get milked and uh, the workers need about one and a half hour to finish everything down here, twice a day. Mm -hmm. So they, with this tool, I save at least half an hour for each milk, so that means one hour a day. That's only the GPS yes. system. Yes. And uh, for the information, for example, uh, on a hood like this, you have at least uh, four to five hundred inseminations a mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. So. They're saying we use a, a different app for that, cows who need to be inseminated. Mm -hmm. We know exactly that selection is made on group, so we take a group, okay, I have two cows there, and then we press on the uh, map, mm -hmm. and then I exactly know where the cows mm -hmm. are. So for each insemination, it saves me at least five minutes. Mm -hmm. the, the, what, what data do you get from the milking robots? Uh, of course, we get the, the yield, mm -hmm. we get the conductivity, mm -hmm. we get the weight of the cow, the temperature of the milk, Together with all those parameters from the sensor and from the robot, if you combine that in the right way, which is lately done in the, their newest management uh, system, you get exactly the right information selected for you, which cows need more attention mm -hmm. or need your attention. Okay. Is there a problem that you get false positives, that you, you get too many cows to look at? No, the, no because, the, because of the serious amount of parameters, mm -hmm. Because you have, uh, if one of the parameters is uh, not uh, are different mm -hmm. than the day before, you won't get an alarm on that. Mm -hmm. Only when there are more parameters changing mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a negative way, mm -hmm. then the system realizes there must be something wrong. Mm -hmm. And then the system shows you with how much percentage uh, serious, uh, seriously uh, it is. Okay. So, and then, uh, of course, you take, when you have with an acute mastitis, for example, you can get 95%. Mm. If a cow is a little bit crippled and uh, is going slowly down in production, you maybe get 25 or 30%. Mm. So it, it, the system makes its own uh, selection. Sort of like the thresholds. Yes. Mm. So then you get the, uh, the selected information is mm. adequate mm. and uh, useful. You don't want 50 cows to look at each morning. No, then it starts to be too complicated, yes. and then the system is useless. Yes. So the reliability on, on a system like this is uh, based on the fact how good the software is. And how? What would you say are the <coughs> biggest benefits from using this type of? Well, well, my workers become better farmers. Yes. Uh, it's very. They get the right. They get the tools. Mm. What normally one with an experience of 20 years. Uh, has in a walk through a stable can see. <laughs> now the guys can see it already before they have entered the stable. And they can on the, see on the screen sometimes even more than an experienced guy can see when he walks through a big herd. Mm. So that's a big advantage. And of course there's economy in this. Yes. I, I guess that's working time, uh, yeah, health, healthier cows. Yeah, yeah, your, your, your reaction is faster. And uh, the cows are uh, not much different than 20 years ago. No. Uh, but the herds are starting to get bigger and bigger. Mm. And it's harder and harder to get knowledge inside the company. Uh, before, it was not too, too bad to find workers who had at least 5 or 10 years experience with cows. Nowadays, you get them pretty young or sometimes from another occupation uh, into your business. And they need to learn, they don't know the basics, or they have the basics, but that's about it. With this technology, uh, you improve their skills. So they become better for me. And uh, actually, it is, when this cow really sick, I can already see before I enter the stable if I need to order a veterinary yes or no. Yes. So it's saving time, healthier cows, and um, better. Farmers, so I'm pleased.
Yeah, well, yeah, you you don't want it to happen that uh, uh, you miss uh, certain things uh, because your people are not skilled enough, and now you uh, and you can't always be there yourself. No. Uh, so with this system, you give the, the your workers the tools to do their job right. Mm -hmm. Now, if I would ask you to, could you recommend this to other farmers? Yes, of course. Farming is still, and I think is all kinds of work. You still need to use common sense, mm. uh, and a computer can be smart, and maybe in a while they're going to be smarter than we are, but uh, they can't beat us yet. So you still need to uh, interpret it, uh, the, the interpret the inf information in a, in, a, in the right way, yeah. and you need to make a selection where I need to take action yes or no, mm -hmm. and that is not changing. And then the cow is still uh, is not much smarter than he is 20 years ago, no. uh, but the, 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 the technology around farming has uh, in increased enormously and has improved uh, our way of working. And also, we can work much easier and much more constant than we could before. So it's a, a part of your the way you handle your herds and your personnel today? Yes. System. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you go uh, to, a, to a system where you have, if you don't use this kind of tools, uh, I don't, I don't want to say that it will save you a lot of money, but it's, uh, it's more the way how you want to run your business. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, this kind of technology, it's all with the technology, you need to understand the technology. Mm -hmm. It's with everything. If you don't understand it, don't buy it. No. it. And it needs to add something to your productivity. And if you would take another step now, what would you think would be your next step? Uh, next step is very hard. This, this, this is a beginning for a sense of technology. It's, it's a new start for uh, a new revelation, I think. So it, it, there will come much more in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, uh, in the coming 10 years. Mm -hmm. If you see in our business how much uh, technology we have introduced, mm -hmm and how much we have improved, uh, there's still a lot to come. But uh, it depends on uh, what the squad guys are uh, figuring out. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really know. Maybe only six months ahead. And uh, yeah, if you have skilled people, the right people on your place, and you add this kind of technology, you improve your production mm. and you improve your profit. Yes. Thank you. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for uh, for producing that last video. I must admit, I was very honoured to visit uh, uh, the uh, the classes farm uh, probably eighteen months ago now, and he's certainly someone who maximises the use of technology for managing his own business. Now, I want to move on now to something that I I, I feel is uh, has changed my view on how you can use uh, accelerometer or movement based sensors on dairy cows. And it came from uh, one of the things we do at 4D4F is our workshops and events. And this is the workshop that we held uh, down in Glastonbury uh, at the farm of David Cotton. Uh, and a great thanks again to his herdsman Steve Crowther for letting all this happen. And the background to this is lameness. And now we all know that lameness is a big issue in, in dairy cows. Uh, I was surprised when I saw the uh, research that it's uh, underreported, and I always question that research as a farmer. Uh, now I certainly do not uh, uh, question that. Uh, it's, uh, most of the studies say it's underreported by at least 25 or 30 percent, 
if not more. And if you look at the cost as work that was done by uh, 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 Bell and uh, Wilshire uh, back in 2009, that put it in euros, uh, 580 euros uh, cost for solent ulcers, 336 euros per case, the cost of white line disease in dairy cows. Now, most of this isn't cost we see, it is cost that we incur because of the loss of milk. In fact, 83% of the cost of lameness is cost that we don't see, it's opportunity cost. We only see 17% of the cost of the veterinary treatment or the milk we discard or labour. So the background to this actually went back to um, 2017 and in September 2017, uh, Cow Alert uh, with a, uh, released the lameness uh, module on their Cow Alert leg tag, leg tag technology. This was the first uh, technology to actually have an automated lameness assessment that would 24 hours a day monitor the cows and come up with a lameness report and it categorized cows into red alert cows, uh, orange alert cows, both of which probably need attention and uh, green cows which were, were, were brilliantly and, and very healthy. Now we visited one of those farms and we'll see a, a video of all of this later, uh, later on uh, and we certainly saw it working, but there was a question mark, and I'd heard this from a number, that uh, it was identifying cows that, when we looked at them, did not look lame. And that was obviously questioning the validity of the lameness reports on cow alert. At about the same time, I was contacted by a guy called George Coles of Miracle Tech, enthusing about what he can do with thermal imaging cameras. So there was only one solution. We decided to get the two together at the farm at the workshop and really see if combining the two technologies uh, would be beneficial for treating lameness. Now the objectives of the workshops were, were numerous and it was, uh, the first was obviously to, val uh, to validate the cow, cow alert lameness alerts. The second one was to, eva was to evaluate the effectiveness of thermal imaging cameras in determining actions to be taken with cows highlighted as red alerts from cow alerts, lameless alerts. The third one was to create a standard operating procedure that combines cow alert and thermal imaging cameras. And the fourth was to assess the amount of technical knowledge and training that is needed to operate a thermal imaging camera on the farm. Obviously, what, how you progress is very different if it's uh, someone that only, someone, uh, someone that is trained to the nth degree to uh, make it work and to give valid information, or is it someone you can pick the camera up and use it more or like a plug and play technology? Uh, and finally, we looked at uh, how to we looked to assess the effectiveness of different specifications of the thermal Im imaging cameras. Do we need a really expensive high resolution one, or are there other ones on the market that, that give us more opportunities and are more cost effective? So what I'd like to do now is play you. Uh, a video that uh, detailed our experiences through the workshop. Our current system for lameness management is to do monthly mobility, which is a great system for um, identifying our lame cows. But the big advantage of the isobotic system is it provides on a daily basis cows which have freshly become lame and hence it allows us to follow our protocol and treat our lame cows within 24 hours. Hopefully then our cows will be say, treated quicker and have a better recovery. This is the, uh, the lame status. We've got um, red, amber and green. Uh, red would be the new, um, any new lameness any new cows have become lame in the last 24 hours. Yellow is attention cows, i.e. cows that are potentially uh, becoming lame. Um, and green would be animals that are unlikely to be lame or healthy cows. Once a day um, we review the lameness alerts and any ones which have been identified as red we review. Um, get them diverted using the automatic segregation 
and the Scotland would then look at the cows to establish what lateness and what treatment needs to be seen. Our current system of doing um, mobility scoring means a cow has to be quite lame and be observed on the time she walks past for 10 seconds in front of the cow and to observe that she's being lame. On the ice robotic system, um, there could be more subtle lameness, which can be seen over a period of time, and the system identifies, and therefore a cow which doesn't demonstrate lameness that well will hopefully and has been picked up by the system um, and therefore is treated earlier than she would have other, otherwise been. The cows we picked out have flagged up on our system either as amber or as red. So Steve picked those out. Um, on first walk round, most of them, one or two of them were had obvious lameness problems. We could see what, what they were. Some of them didn't, they weren't too obviously lame. So we then looked at them with thermal um, imaging cameras, pinpointed a foot, for example, that there was a problem with, brought them in, got them into the crush, picked them up, um, and on closer examination, several of them we found there was an issue. There were certainly two that we couldn't visibly see any issue. Um, but on closer inspection and following the thermal imaging where the hotspot was, we discovered um, uh, the start off of, a, of an ulcer, uh, and also um, which would actually probably would have led to a white line abscess, and we did find one with a white line abscess as well. So we wouldn't have seen those had we not um, had the thermal imaging coming. The monitor picked it out, uh, and to look at it, nothing wrong with it, but look at it a little bit deeper, there was a white line abscess on it, which are rectified by blocking it and which, you know, by the naked eye you couldn't really see it. You couldn't really see the, the white line abscess on it, whereas the thermal imaging camera actually picks it out. The cow alert will pick out a lame cow. The heat camera will pick out the actual foot and pinpoint on the actual foot where to go and look for it. So, yeah, very impressed. So I, I think the two together, the uh, um, our lameness alerts, alerting the fact that that cow is lame, then with the added advantage to be able to go in and pinpoint where the actual problem is, I think that is very, very useful, very good. Okay, well you can see from the, from the video how enthused Steve the cabman was at, at the end of it. And that said it all to me because when we first uh, came on the farm, well two things really. Uh, I saw the six cows that had been separated out and I believe I'm a good stockman. Uh, you know, I've worked with cows all my life. And to my, of the six cows, five of those cows did not show signs of lameness. I thought I had had a wasted journey. Steve the cowman, who was an excellent uh, stockman and really has majored on feet and legs and, and having a really good herd as far as uh, lameness and locomotion is concerned. He was very uh, dubious about how thermal imaging cameras could actually help him at all. And he would, it was, uh, it started off, he, he begrudgingly looked at the camera and after the first cow, you couldn't get the camera out of his hands. Yeah, and that said a lot to me about, about using it anyway. What I'd like to do is go through the objectives of the workshop one by one and see what, well, what did we find out. Well, the first thing was to validate the cow alert, lameness alerts. Obviously, we heard from uh, Klaus Yellema about the, the problems of false positives, and it's a big issue with uh, technology. But now, because we have taken this a stage further, we're actually seeing things with technology that good stockmen cannot see. You have to question your definition of what is a false positive. And here, in my, in my opinion, we had a technology that was accurately identifying lameness long before a good stockman can identify it. And think of the implications of that on animal welfare and be able to treat those cases much earlier. Of those five cows that we had that did not look lame, I said there were two white line diseases we found, one ulcer, one bruising. So it certainly validated, in my eyes, the... Uh, the effectiveness of the cow alert uh, uh, red alert 
uh, cows on the red or cows on the red alert list. They were laying. I'm also hearing uh, from other other workshops has happened that the same uh, applies to the amber alerts on on the cow alert. The next objective was to evaluate the effectiveness of thermal imaging cameras, and I think we certainly found that because and again the first cow that we put up, put onto the uh, onto the uh, uh, and looked at with the thermal imaging camera, we identified an issue just above the front left claw of that cow. Um, and the, uh, what we did at the workshop was then take the cow to a whopper crush and we, and we foot trimmed it. And we originally foot trimmed it, as, or Steve did, as he would normally, and he found didn't find anything. It was only when he then referred to the uh, thermal imaging again and knowing which claw the issue was, he went that little bit further with the cow knife that he uncovered the ulcer. So that to me, the effectiveness of it just identifies where the, uh, and on which particular claw the issue is and gives you the confidence to do effective treatment of it. So that was great. Uh, the SOP we did, we created a new SOP, standard operating procedure from this. And I hope any uh, foot trimmer that's out there will automatically go out now and get a thermal imaging camera because it really, if you are treating feet, you need to look at the cows themselves with the thermal imaging camera. Uh, and obviously all these standard operating procedures you can access on the 4D4F website, uh, which is to my left here. The, la the next ob objective was to assess the amount of technical knowledge and training used to operate a thermal imaging camera. Um, Obviously, if you want to define precise temperatures on things, you need a lot of training. But what we're looking at here is only identifying hotspots and we're looking at temperature differentials. There were six people on, that, on the workshop. Three of the people on the workshop, including myself, had never used a thermal imaging camera before. Within 10 minutes, all three of us were accurately and consistently diagnosing the specific sites of where infections and issues were on the cows that we saw in front of us. So that told me it is a technology that can be used by farmers or stockmen on farm. And then uh, the, the, uh, the last one was to assess the effectiveness of different specifications of thermal imaging cameras. Uh, we had two there, we had a very, very high spec one, uh, which was great. Uh, but the, the, the cheaper one, which was still a very good thermal imaging camera, but it was based on a, on a tablet, uh, was just as effective and about a quarter of the price. So to my mind, I, yeah, I would certainly, uh, I think you need a quality of thermal imaging camera, but that the quality of the, of the lower spec one that we tried out was certainly con uh, consistent enough. So to me, this was, I think it was, again, from the video of Klaus Yelema, it's about seeing inside the cow. It's the same when you look at her, her navigator, when they, you look at progesterone or uh, beta hydroxybutrate or LDH for mastitis testing. Technologies now can look inside the cow and see things that stockmen can't. And that is, the, I think, the, the progression we are seeing with technology that we haven't seen before. And it really is a sea change in what we can get. We, we, I started my talk earlier on saying that most of the technologies on farm the uh, feedback or the payback is from reproduction or better reproduction. Uh, it is my uh, view now that the major, certainly in the higher yielding herds, the major impact is actually on identifying uh, diseases, uh, better nutrition, uh, lameness much earlier. And in this case, weeks earlier than you would normally, you would see it if you waited for that individual cows to show lameness. And this brings us on now to the next section. And this is the Community of Practice Innovation Prize. Um, this was uh, voted on on the Community of Practice um, uh, over September, October. And it's my pleasure at the end of this to announce who the winner is. Uh, there were three technologies that went up for vote on the, uh, on the Community of uh, Practice. The first one was Synomis, which is Pinio, the stable kit. There's a brief synopsis of the technologies here. You can look at them in more detail again on the website but this is based on the internet of things and ai technology and it was released in january 2018 and it uh, monitors gases dangerous for both animal health and human safety it's obviously a concern for all of us ammonia hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide uh, methane along with temperature humidity noise dust and light 
It then uses machine learning to alert farmers in real time of dangerous conditions and also provide uh, predictive maintenance tools to improve the efficiency of their work. So that was obviously a very strong contender. Uh, the next one was Miracle Tech themselves. Uh, uh, and as we've gone through that, and, and, and uh, there's probably no need to re read the, the report of that because we've already mentioned that in the, in the previous article. And the third application was Uniform and their Agri standalone app project. And this is a cloud-based app which is released in local language, uh, which has extended the digital data manage, management to countries in development. So uh, Vietnam now, and, uh, and, and it is being rolled out into other developing countries. Uh, and the aim of the project is to improve both milk production and efficiency and milk quality controls by recording information on reproduction, milk production, collections, health and cost. So very, very useful for the developing world and something that obviously has been uh, on farming in Europe for a while. As one of the applicants was very close to us, we decided to go in and actually see Miracle Tech themselves to see how they develop it. So I'd like to play you a video now on uh, Miracle Tech. My name is George Coles, I'm the owner of Miracle Tech. Um, I'm also a beef farmer. Um, we run um, mainly symmetry cows here and Angus, um, running 120 cow commercial herd, and then the two pedigree herds, both running at around about six, seven breeding females at the minute, but we're building those up as we have more females to upload. I've uh, been a big user of technology here now for seven, eight years, um, using different things like carbon sensors and that, and then five years ago, I came up with the idea of using thermal imaging to help me manage the herd better, reducing antibiotics, all that sort of thing. We officially launched Miracle Tech uh, December the 1st and 2nd, 2017. The first cameras quickly went out onto beef farms in that following December. Um, Got, got a lot of interest, but a couple of farmers took it on board. We really started then with the dairy industry in the March 2018 um, after launching to the dairy industry at a show. But as well as a standalone device, you know, it's, it's useful for a lot of other things as well, and working with dairy sensors, all that sort of thing in the dairy industry as well. Calman saying how easy it is to use it. It's just walk up, point it at the animal. Walking around the yard, perfectly normal, looks like nothing's wrong with them. You're finding tiny, tiny, tiny little hot spots on the side of the feet, which are actually giving your cowman the confidence to get it in the crush, to have a go with a knife, and to find where the problem is, because the camera is showing a problem. We've been finding white line separation, sole ulcers, bad bruising of the feet, finding these things probably days before they'll actually break through into an infection, which would be a big problem. Saving, again, saving antibiotics, saving hassle, saving the milk coming out of the tank. Well, we're also working on um, a lot of stuff now for the future. Um, thermal imaging really is going to be big in the future. The more work we keep doing, the more we're finding. We're working with a lot of universities on different things now. Um, heat detection for AI and getting your artificial insemination more accurate. That looks like it's going to be big in the future. We're doing work on um, young stock, growth rates, how you can determine more accurately your breeding heifers, things like that through um, body temperature um, and there, there's work being done on mastitis detection, not by myself but by another university. There really is a lot of stuff coming in, in the next couple of years, third imaging is going to be a lot, lot bigger. I'm Richard Lloyd from Innovation for Agriculture. It's my pleasure to be here today with George Coles who is a a beef farmer from Brackley in Northamptonshire and George is the winner of the 4D4F Innovation Prize for 2018. George, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, more than that, I've obviously uh, been in touch, you've been in touch with us since uh, December 2017 and 4D4F. Can you uh, tell me how 4D4F has helped you in your development of Miracle Tech? Oh, it's been brilliant to be fair. I mean, been a beef farmer, I wasn't really that well known in the um, dairy industry, um, also not really knowing a lot about the dairy industry to be fair. Um, getting in touch with Richard and then 4D, 4F and that, it really has opened a lot of doors for us. Be it networking with other dairy farmers, networking with vets, people in the industry, 
um, manufacturers of other technology in the um, dairy industry. It, it basically, it's just opened an awful lot of doors for me. Okay. We have a question from one of the watchers. Uh, it's Martin Burke, and he says, Hi, Christine and colleagues. Uh, many thanks for a very useful warehouse of sensors. One question, though. Did you invest any effort to validate or rank the relative accuracy levels of the sensors? Well, that's a very hard question. Uh, accurate, the, um, defining the accuracy of a sensor because it all depends on what you take as your golden standard. So no, we did not include that in the warehouse of technologies as it, as it is, but there are um, many articles out there on validating commercial sensors and uh, yeah, we can refer to those. Leonard, can I, can I come into that question as well? Uh, and I certainly agree with Christine. Christine, it's very hard to validate the effectiveness. What we did do, or have tried to do, is identify where the different sensors differ, what other things that they actually uh, can contribute to a farm, and where things differ, whether it is the range of, of the sensors or the battery life, then we actually compare the different sensors. So you can go go down and look at the, the comparison of the stated functionality of all the sensors that are in the market. So it does help you on, on, in that way. We just check in to see if there's anything on, 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 on Twitter coming through. I think we have a question in Facebook. So while we're looking for, for different questions, so I think we're, we're, we're probably just about to, uh, to, to wrap up. If there's any more questions, please do send us and we'll try and pick them up. But if we look to the future, where do we see the futures of sensors and technology going uh, and the future of 4D4F? Well, 4D4F, our project, which is funded, as I said, by the European Union, goes to uh, February uh, uh, next year, February 2019, and we would love to... Uh, if you have any information, any, any case studies of new, new technologies, how they are working, how they are improving farmers' lives, then we'd love to hear about them and we will make studies and put present video presentations of them or case studies of them and post them onto our, our website. But to my mind, the future, the future, I think there's going to be a bigger and bigger focus on animal welfare and all the implications that has not just to consumers, but also on the ability to reduce antibiotic use uh, in the dairy sector, something that is key to, uh, to I think, everyone. Um, and I think we, we, we're looking to go beyond current be best practice. I, and that was summed up, as we said in the presentation today, the ability to look inside the cow, not just look at what we could have seen anyway. Uh, uh, up to now, sensors have really been just focusing the mind of the stockman on cows they need to look at. And I think we need uh, uh, the future will see us going to the sensors with, along with other data, identifying potential specific issues, health issues on cows. I, th I think that is a, a big way that it, it's going to go. And this, as we've seen in the latest example, could quite often mean combining multiple sensors. For instance, at the moment, if you've got a looking for reproduction in a cow, maybe one of your choices to put a leg tag on from cow alert or maybe a cow manager ear tag or the other neck collars that you have. So you, you're, you're, you're making a choice. Is lameness more important to me? Or is identifying rumination and the nutritional benefits of monitoring rumination, is that important to me? You put both sensors, you know, so I think the future, we have to bring both in because it's the whole of the cow that is, is what farmers and ourselves are interested in. And so this uh, combining sensors and whether we combine that with other other sensors like we had from the Plinio kit, from the uh, environmental sensors. If we're going to do that, 
we need to integrate all of those sensors into a single uh, management system. And I think that is, again, the future on where we're looking to go in having uh, sensors that will talk to management systems that you can combine rather than having five or six systems that a farmer will have to look at for each individual sensor because that is not the sustainable way of using it. And when you're doing that and when you have it into a management system, you can then incorporate all the other things that you need to know, like milk yield and fat and protein and milk yield today from yesterday or the day before. And you can bring all the information to, to turn the alerts into actions and accurate actions and actions that we could have done as in the, as in the form of labels, maybe three weeks before we would have done had we waited to see that cow was being laid. Um, so that's where I see the, the main focus of it going. Uh, I also see that if you can amalgamate the data, how we can use that for genetic gain in the future, for things that we can't, uh, we, we can't breed for at the moment, that there's an awful lot of potential there. And while 4D4F is um, ending in February 2019, there is another European thematic network called Nefertiti, and 4D4F is going to be one of the 10 uh, themes within that. So we are looking for, this is a really a call that's going out, anyone who has an interest in developing and disseminating best practice in the use of dairy technology, please do get in touch. We would like to include you within the, uh, the, 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 the network that will be the 4D for F within Nefertiti. Uh, so then if there are no more questions, I, I would like to thank you all for viewing. Uh, I hope you've had, um, uh, you, you've enjoyed it. I hope it stimulated you. Uh, if you think you've got friends that might also, or colleagues who might also uh, like to see it, then this will be posted in the coming days on the 4D for F website so you can relive it in all its glory. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank everyone here who's contributed to all the presentations. Uh, and again, most of all, thank you for you for watching. Thank you.